Peace in folks, how you doing? Use the force, positive mental attitude, or at least try. Um, but don't fake it, you know, don't fake it. If you're not feeling positive, don't be positive, you know? Anyway, hope you're all well. Um, so I thought I would just share my thoughts on the march that happened yesterday in London, uh, 28th of November 2020. What a year it's been, eh? Bonkers. Absolutely bonkers. Uh, but anyway, the march yesterday was very interesting. Um, I didn't know if I was going to go or not. That was quite a whimsical thing, as per with me. Um, but I'm really glad I did. I got quite a lot of insight. Um, and it was just interesting to see how the police behaved you know, um, and to be able to get some of that on video, although it wasn't the clearest quality, unfortunately. I need to take a better camera with me next time, and two of them. <laughs> um, because we need to see what's happening, and I think we all need to think about it. Like, And I, when I say us all, I literally mean us all, you know, from every position that there is in this society, you know, and every type of person there is, you know, the police need to consider what it is that they're actually enforcing. It's obvious that one of the key traits for police officers is that they're more likely to just enforce as opposed to think about, which is obviously problematic if you want any type of progression. You know, not in an unhealthy way. It's a healthy thing, but obviously... There are people in positions in this society that don't want to give up any of what they've got. Cool, I understand that. But there's too many people that are suppressed so that they can't even get what they need. So things need to change, that's obvious. And, you know, I think the police are going to have a really hard time with this. That was one of my observations from yesterday, because... As soon as they move in like they do, which we'll go into, but they get mobbed by people shaming them. Big time. This is something you're not seeing in the news, is the fact that literally hundreds of people swarm this little group of police officers that, police officers that are surrounding, you know, maybe three, four, five, six police officers that are detaining forcefully detaining someone they just snatched out of the crowd because this is what they're doing they go in separate snatch right and it ain't like these people are targeted for particular reasons they're just snatching people right and then they form a circle around the coppers that are forcefully and at times you see them laying in knees and stuff like that right for a bug that's got a high contagious rate but a low effect rate in reality like i know they're highlighting the deaths but when you go looking for the deaths and illnesses humanity gets each year this is not our most dangerous threat the most dangerous threat seems to be the fucking reaction that the global governments are doing it you know i like part of me isn't sure if covid is loose it's real because it's documented. So, but if it is loose, the reality of what it is, is it's harmful to certain groups of people and we need to protect them, not by hiding. Because most people don't get affected by it. So we'd be most efficient in protecting the people that are weak that want protecting and if they don't want protecting and they're happy to take their odds, we should let them. That's their choice. But we shouldn't be enforcing things that aren't healthy anyway. So, you know, food for thought, right? So the cops will do this thing where they'll just come in out of side streets, try and split the pack up, right? Or, right? You'll see them coming in, right, from the sides, and then they'll just see someone who moves a bit shady or weak, and then one of them will lurch from, and then that's it, they jump on them.
you know. No, there's too many inconsistencies, and I say that, and it's very hard to highlight all the inconsistencies, right? Not for some people, maybe. I'm just talking about for me. <laughs> you know, unless I was to write everything down, document everything, so that I could display it perfectly, it, it's, it's tricky. But I have a go, obviously. I mentioned many things to do with many things that lead to plenty of research. And this is my point because I can't tell anyone anything and it be taken with the full meaning of it as if someone else went and found something. The meaning they and the energy they would take from what they find is so much more powerful than just believing what someone else tells you. If you're just believing what someone else tells you, you're still open to being talked into something else. Whereas if you learn and you know something, you can't be talked into things you can be talked with. But you can't be talked into something because talking won't cut it, right? You know, they'd say talk is cheap. I don't think it is. But in our day and age, where we have so much information available, where we have so much means to resources, we've never been more connected, which has got to be scary for, for, for those that are in ruling classes, right? Because it means the ideas spread real fast, you know. And, you know, obviously you've got social media suppression going on with everything. You know, I never know what video is going to get out or not. I just assume because I'm not reaching enough people, they're not too fussed about me. Cool. <laughs> but, you know, we need to think about some things, man. So the riot. The riot. That's what it felt like at times, right? I posted a video onto my YouTube page. You can have a look at it. It's about 50 minutes long. Um, you know, I got to the march late. Um the main pack had already been split up which i didn't realize because when i got there and i i found where the pack was uh later on when i then watched back someone else's youtube channel filming the whole thing i realized that i'd a missed about an hour and a half and b the pack was easily double the size um you know so that's one of the things like what was also interesting was how the people were to the police. Like there was a few voices that you hear in videos and they sound like football fan rioters, which makes me think they're plants from the police, right? Because of the words they're using. But when you hear people that are there for their reasons talking to the police, and there's a lot of them, right? This has got to be fucking with the officers, right? Because they're talking about all these truths that are connected to our society, more the high end of society, right? The high end of society, that's what, that's what they say. It's, it's appropriate wording for the structure we live in. <laughs> but the police are really gonna like, and I really hope they struggle to ignore the amount of things that are being said. And also they've got to ignore the amount of marches that they're going to where if this virus was deadly enough to lock the planet down, enough of them would be dead, enough of us would be dead, but we know it's like a selective thing. It's, you know, a, a real conspiracy theorist would say to you that this virus was released to attack certain groups. You know, um, it's always a possibility, right? I don't, I don't, uh, Again, I don't really know, I don't have like a decision on what I think is happening right now, because it's happening right now. But what I know is there's a very big, like for the, for the mainstream community of society, right? People who just get their news from, from mainstream news sources, you know, Sky, BBC, The Guardian, blah, 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 right? If, if, if it's just that, then there's a big focus, you know, on what's going on, on case rates, on the virus, on this, that and the other, you know, look over here, look over here, look over here. And I've just been thinking to myself, well, what aren't we looking at that they're doing that we could do with looking at as well? You know, 
I just think that the power structure wants to keep it the way it is. So why wouldn't it? You know, you can't blame them for wanting to keep what's been serving them so well for so long to keep going. But when we've got so many other options that are actually better for more people, you know, it just seems a bit fucking short-sighted not to start acting on that and moving towards it. And someone in a chat earlier said, but how the hell can we change anything? You know, and I, I gave a really simple probably annoying unfulfilling answer which was we change ourselves first if we can't recognize some change within ourself openly and honestly and act on it how are we ever going to recognize any real significant change externally and act on it for the better do you know what i mean so i really that's why i sing the awareness song you know because I truly believe that the more we face ourselves, the more ability we have to face anything else. I'm not, you know. I'm not. I'm not. And I need to. I don't think there's anything wrong with us. It's just we've been mistaught on a few things, which has jaded our perspective on a few things which has created a few illusions on a few things. So it's not like I'm saying there's anything wrong with people. It's just we've been misguided, right? And that's really fucking obvious. You know, when you take the time to objectively look at like many subjects, it's just pretty obvious. And I don't even think you need to look to see it. It's just, you know, I, I'm looking for ways to hand people something whereby they walk away and go and look at something and it helps them you know yeah like they say you know the truth will set you free but it will piss you off first you know that type of thing can happen and also the truth cannot piss you off you can just see things and be like oh well that's no surprise is it you know it's not always like some serious level of like doom and gloom or fucking whatever but it, you know the police are being They're only doing what their job is, and I get it. But in this day and age, ignorance is a choice. Ignorance is a choice in this day and age. In this device I'm making this video with, that I can send out to you wherever you are in the globe, I also have the ability to find information so vast it's unbelievable. Real information. I'm talking like you can learn science online. You can do real courses in history online. You know, fuck me. It's like the closest thing to the libraries of Alexander. I think we've ever had since they burnt it, destroyed it and decimated our, our ancestry, our history. The libraries of Alexandria were, were, were written to be immense you know, people like the Dogon had interactions with the Library of Alexander you know the Dogon have some deep ass knowledge on the stars that, that Western civilization only caught up with 50 years ago and the Dogon had known about the Sirius B star for thousands of years, but our telescopes could only pick it up something like 50, 60, 70 years ago. In the last hundred years. And this tribe in Africa called the Dogon have known about this for thousands of years. There's many things that leave many beautiful questions. And we're almost up on that time. So what a place to leave it. Beautiful questions. Go find some. It's liberating. So use a force. Positive mental attitude. Be kind with your thoughts to yourselves and others. Keep loving your hearts for yourselves like you would others. And let's get it. Get what, John? Awareness, of course. Peace in.